Alright, today's video is on changing the subject of formula. So in red here, I've written the main rule that you have to follow and that is to unwrap the variable by doing reverse operations, okay? So I will show some examples, like 1, 2, 3, 4 are just uh, simple examples, okay? So to make x the subject, for example, if I have y equals kx, okay? What I should do is just divide by k, okay? So I will get y over k equals x because once I divide by k on both sides I would be able to isolate x okay for 2 it's simple you just multiply by k right so ky equals x so of course um, in the correct answer you should make x in front okay but it's still the same now for 3 you have a little bit of a problem here it's not a big problem some of you may find it a problem some of you won't it's actually very easy okay Basically, if you have a equals b over c, you can interchange a and c, and you will get uh, the equivalence. Okay, that means the equation will still be correct. It would not be off balance. Okay, it will still be a valid equation like this. Okay, a equals b over c, c is b over a. Okay, same for minus, right? a equals b minus c, c is b minus a. It's the same. Basically, I can swap the position of this. Because when you identify which one is the whole and which are the parts, then it's very clear, right? So B is my whole. Okay? Because B minus C is A. C and A consist of the parts. It's like, this is B, this is C, and this is A. I think I've explained this before, okay? So B minus A is C, B minus C is A. It's the same as division, okay? B divided by C is A, B divided by A is C, okay? So it's just a it's just a small thing. I think I've explained it before, but uh, I'll just say in case you didn't watch my other videos. Okay, so then this becomes very easy, right? It's actually x equals k over y because I just swap the positions and I'm done. 4 is very easy as well. You just have to square root both sides. So square root y, you get x, okay? So pretty straightforward. I did not talk about the addition and subtracting because I think those are very easy. Like for example, if you get y uh, equals x minus k, it should be very clear that you just need plus k on both sides, right? k plus y is x. Same for addition. So straightforward stuff. These are the basic rules. Of course, the actual questions will come uh, in the form of a combination of all these things. So then you have to unwrap the variable. So here you can see x is nested in a bracket with a square outside and it's also, it has a minus b behind it. So what do we do? Now one way to see it is that we just look at x and think of the things you have to do in order. First I have to minus b, correct? So minus. After I minus I have to square. So all I have to do is I have to reverse this operation and instead of square I do a square root, instead of minus I do a plus. So what I have to do is first I do the square root. So I get root y equals x minus b. After that, then I do the plus, which is basically root y plus b is x. So there I have it, x is my subject. Okay, so the, the key is to isolate x out. Now, the same for question 6. So I'll just say first. So first, x, the first step I do is after I plus c, then I divide by b. After I divide by b, I do a square root and then I plus a. Oops, uh, I see my own equation on it. I plus c, then I do the square root. Then I divide by b, then I plus a. Okay, so then I just have to reverse this into minus. Just do the opposite times square minus. Okay, so minus a first. So y minus a is root. The top remains the same. Right? And then this one remains the same. Then I have to do the times. Times b. Okay. After that, then I have to square it. Square both sides. So I should get b square. y minus a square. Is x plus c. Then very lastly, I minus of the c. So you can see it's kind of like unwrapping a. Uh, I'm wrapping x. Okay, so this is the final form. Okay, 
course you can uh, simplify this a bit if you find that it's a bit messy but roughly this is how it should look like okay so now we'll come to some so these are still quite easy I think okay if you find it a problem then please just uh, practice more find some exercises to do there are tons of worksheets online now let's do something a little bit more difficult which is 7 8 okay so 7 you see X is in two different places. So far, X is only in one place, right? But now X is in two places. So what you have to do is you have to isolate X out. So what I would do is I would split this fraction into two. Okay, so I would get X over K plus 2Y over K. Right? But then I want to isolate X. So what I would write, I would write this as 1 over K times X. You see, because now this looks more x looks more isolated like this, right? It's clearer for me to see and clearer for you to see as well. Then you have to shift all the x to one side. It doesn't matter which side, okay? It, either way, it's fine. So let's say 1 over k, x, I'll put this like that, minus 8x. Then I'm going to shift the non-x to the other side, okay? It will be minus ky minus 2y over k. Then I just have to factorize out x, right? So it's 1 over k minus 8x. Right, okay, so you just have to factorize out x. This one you don't have to worry. Minus ky. I think you can factorize out y. Let's just do that in case y. Minus k minus 2 over k, okay? So this is the very last step. You just have to divide by the coefficient of x. Okay, which I have no space, I'll just write here. So x should give you y minus k minus 2 over k. Divide 1 over k minus a. This is the final answer, okay? Seems like it's very messy, but it is the answer because x appears in two places here and it's more complicated than this kind of questions, okay? So we do question 8. So 8 is the hardest one out of all these, okay? Now for A, okay, so you see X is on top and X is below. So we have a little bit of a problem. We can't, basically you should know that if your denominator has additional subtraction, like this, okay, you can't split them. You have a problem. You can only split them when the numerator is like this. Okay, basically you can't do anything about this. That's what I'm trying to say. So what you can do is, I'm going to swap the position of y square and this. So that's why this uh, shortcut comes into handy. Sometimes you don't want to be making complicated steps, right? If I were to do it slowly, like this, some people would just do it like this first, right? And then, then they will bring the y square down. But then, it seems very unnecessary to me. So hopefully you can get used to this shortcut. It will save you a lot of time. So I would just use the shortcut, which is this. Okay, so remember ideally you should have x on this side, x on this side. So you cannot have x on top and x below. It, it won't work like this, at least in this kind of uh, format, okay? Then now you can cut because the denominator is only one thing here. There's only one thing here, right? So you can split it. So again, just go do the same thing. Isolate out the x. Okay, then the right hand side can remain as it is, it's quite nice. I'm just going to erase this because I have no more space. And I'm going to do it over there. Okay, so same thing, same logic as question 7, okay? Then I put all the x to one side, I'm just going to make x to the left and the non-x to the right, okay? Okay, 3k plus k over y squared. So of course, again, I can factorize out the k. I'm just going to uh, pull out the coefficients of x first. So what is this? This is minus 1, okay? And then on this side, I'm just going to pull out k. I get 3 plus 1 over y squared. So the last step is the easiest, which I'm going to do here. You just divide by the coefficient, which is this. k, 3 plus 1. 1 over y squared over whatever this is, which is 2 over y squared minus 1. So 
So there you have it. This is how I make X the subject. So 7 and 8 are a little bit more complicated. Otherwise, I don't think it can get much more complicated than this. So yeah, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.